Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Lord our God is one, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Lord, the Father, created with the Son. Okay? The Father is Emmanuel. Okay? So to say. He's Emmanuel. God is with us. Jesus, Yahweh, I mean uh, uh, Yeshua, is the Son. He's the chosen one, the anointed one. Okay? He's the one who saves us and gets us home to the Father in his perfect will. Christ means his anointing to become his anointed, the Holy Spirit, and the servants of God, the saints, to make them holy. Now you know what the fire is for. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Heart, mind, soul. In a furnace. Our bodies are furnace. You, anybody here ever feel the fire of God in you? Sometimes so hot you sweat. He's turned the fire up. Seven times hotter. Destroys all the strong men who seek to control you like a spider web. So all certain events in your life, and then they use that, and then Jezebel starts spinning from the inside out. Hmm. Then when, he, when Jezebel's got you where you want, cocoons you. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's called blindness. Hmm. Steal, kill, destroy. That's what the cocoon is. Steal, kill, destroy. The spider does not kill its prey. It sucks the life out of it. Now you understand, steal, kill, destroy. The devil wants to suck the life. The devil doesn't come out of it. He will come at you just to kill you. But when you are founded in the Lord and you have the rock and you know you are rooted in the rock. You ever notice the rocks growing plants and trees? That's us. That's us. In the rock is very fertile ground. Okay? And it's a place you can stand. You can grow. In that process, we got to recognize what God really gave us. Okay? And there are conditions. God's not just going to give us stuff to run out and use them. No! We saw that in the boats, didn't we? There was two boats in the beginning. Okay? One's the Old Testament, the, the, the other one is the New Testament. To come. That's why Jesus ordered them to go out again. He was going to show them what's coming. They became one. Did you catch that? Testimony witness, they became one in the end. One covenant. And still they were fruitless. Why? Because they were out of order. God didn't tell them to go out there. Peter, the church, got bored. Said, let's go. Well, why didn't he wait there and learn who the Holy Spirit was? Why didn't he spend more time with the Holy Spirit? Because he hadn't bowed himself yet. But he was about to. Because here's this man on the shore cooking fish. Huh? I love it. And nobody knew who he was but one person. And I was shocked. I could not believe when I read it the first time. What is he doing on that boat? He knew the heartbeat of God. And that's exactly why he was on that boat. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, not one person on that boat. And it was nine of them all together. If I remember right, nine. It was, it was eight. Because it was Peter and he took seven with him. And they were all apostles, by the way. And they should have been in the upper room learning from the Holy Spirit. And becoming acquainted with him for what was about to take place. But no. Peter got bored and he talked the others to go in with him. Why? Because he was a leader. Okay? He was not the apostle of the apostles, but he was one of them. And they paid great attention to him. Probably because he had a big mouth. <laughs> but in that process, when John saw this, he said, he, Peter, that's the Lord. His eyes were open. Did you catch that? Did you catch what was said about verse 12 here? Yeah. That's the Lord. And your eyes were open to that verse. You are that house that God is blessing. And he's being dedicated. You're sacrificing your life.
to God, are you not? Every day is another sacrifice, right? Now, I pray to God you don't have to go 22,000 days or 120,000, whatever. But you understand, okay? Cattle represents a protein that you can only get in red meat, which builds and sustains the muscles in your body, which are fleshly, while doing warfare, which we were never created to do. Interesting, isn't it? 22 is a double portion of manifestation of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 11 is, is the manifestation of what we choose and decide. So 22, see, there's that thousandfold anointing. Thank you. 22,000. Two is also the Son of God. One the Father, two the Son, three the Holy Spirit, who reveals to Godhead to us. Four is the number of the body and bride of Christ. Five, blood covenant. Six, the number of man. Seven, everybody knows it as... The perfect number. Why? God said, you want to know? I said, yeah. He says, I'm going to use, this is, it represents me bringing my people to full fruition in my fruit. So they cannot be seen. They only see me. Eight, the number of again. Anything with the letters R-E dash. R-E means again. It's the number eight. Reborn. I like to use the four or five R's. Is is uh, reborn, renewed, restored, rejuvenated, and regenerated by the Holy Spirit. In other words, I'm 70 years old, and up until I got sick eight years ago, I had little or no gray hair. And at that time, I was in the 60s. This is a, the gray now is from, from the sickness in the body. But at the same time, I'm still going backwards. Because I'm becoming more childlike. I've learned to let the, the little child in me, which God breathed into me, made me a living soul, is a child. Not childish, childlike. And I trust God. Not knowing, I trust God. Or at least try to. <clears throat> That's where repentance comes in. Thank God. But we go backwards. Miracles. Going backwards, is it not? Regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Rejuvenation, regeneration of the Holy Spirit. Is that not a miracle? Mm -hmm. Healings. Yes. Going backwards. We're regenerating. Right? So when we take a look and we see these things in the Spirit, now you understand 2 Corinthians 7, 6 and 7, which also you understand all of Ephesians. And John, Jeremiah, I mean, I can go on and on and on. They're all linked together. They all cover some aspect of God and what He's doing and the five R's. That's what it's all about. That we become Christ-like. And we become his mirrored image on the earth. Because he is in us. They get to see him. When we lift him up, he draws men to us. Because he's in us. He said, when I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Is that not what he said? Well, that is seven. The fruit of Jesus in you. Because it's him. And he's fruitful. We find that out from the boats. Well, what had happened when Peter? What happened when Peter recognized when his eyes were open? He recognized he was naked. In the process of being naked, what it meant is that he was out there with no authority and he endangered every single person on that boat. Because he manipulated them to go. He didn't want to go out there alone. Misery loves company. And Peter was miserable. He wanted to go back to his old vomit. God said he was going to make her a fisher of men, not to go fishing. Mm -hmm. Okay? So God uses everything. We know that. I mean, look at the first, first two boats. They almost sank. It was the last boat. They couldn't even get the net in the boat. But Peter was already in the water swimming to Jesus. When that net got... He said, throw it to the right side. Oh, that's where the sheep are. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
Just because they're unsaved, it doesn't mean they're not sheep. There's a mixture of goats and sheep in the unsaved. Okay? Do you know now there's a mixture also in the church who say they're saved, but they're not? Okay? You'd be surprised how many witches and warlocks are in every church. Some of them in leadership. That's what's happened to the church. Nobody used the Holy Spirit to test them. I know a place, they were known worldwide for their for the choir in Wenatchee, Washington. And they had all kinds of money and stuff and they, the, the, the leadership put it into uh, diamonds and disappeared. Mm. It wasn't just done, it was done over a period of time. Wow. And I always asked the Lord, where were the prophets? They were known for, people, for, for prophets, they were known for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. How did it happen? Because they didn't want to believe what the Holy Spirit was telling them about leadership. We've got to learn to trust God and what He's saying. If you're not sure, then you go find two or three or more people that you know hear from the Holy Spirit and put it before them to get a consensus of what God's doing. It must be a minimum of two or three. As it says in, the, in, I can't remember if it's the Psalms or what, I think it's Proverbs, that a wise man seeks counsel in many places. Use it. Humble yourself and find out for sure what the Spirit is saying. Verse 13. <coughs> and by the way, you are a house of sacrifice. Yeah. Not one amen? amen? I must not be doing a good job here, Lord. Amen. You are a house of sacrifice. Amen. Thank you. <coughs> so why did you say amen? Because I challenged you, didn't it? Huh? Got you, didn't I? Why would you say amen to such a statement? It's no longer I that live, but Christ that liveth in me. That's why amen. Sacrifice is you dying to yourself every single day while being crucified with Christ. He's causing us to die to self. Which is a blessing, by the way. Because if you don't die to yourself, you can't sit in this throne. I'm sorry, this is scripture, go read it. To be seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ is you have surrendered. You have died to self. And God is teaching you how to rule and reign as a king. What does it say in the book of Revelation? We are priests and kings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you understand what that's about. See? We are ascending. We're not climbing in a mountain. That's our power. We're ascending. That's his power. Did you catch that? Okay, it also goes to Isaiah 40, 31. Okay? And we rise up. At, oh, here's the way it's preached. We rise up with wings of eagles. No! It says as with winds wings of the eagles. We are ascending by the Holy Spirit and fire. Heat always rises. Fire always takes the dross and it gives it to God. You ever notice how there's always spark? Everything in a fire always goes up. Never goes down. Fire never goes down unless it's working its way down a post or something. Fire is always upwards. Always. And we are to become pillars of fire. That's why you were houses of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, verse 13, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes, 15, now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this house or this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house. He breathed on you. That be filled with the Holy Spirit. That my name may be there forever, eternity. 
and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. The word M-I-N-E in the Bible represents Jesus Christ. In the Psalms, it talks about mine enemies. Those are devils. Okay? But did you catch that last part? And you will have his eyes and his heart. Which is a good thing. I'm going to hear it bothering me. It's a good thing because here's why. In the Old Testament, we've all wanted the heart of David. Anybody here not want the heart of David? A heart after God. I don't. I don't. I don't want David's heart. I want the key of David in the New Testament. That's Jesus' heart. He's speaking about what's to come. He said, I will, I, I will have my mind, or my, my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually. In other words, ongoing. Just like the prayer of John 17. Perpetual prayer, it never stops. The heart of God never stops in us because we have the heart of Jesus. It's called the key of David. It unlocks us from the flesh. David's heart did not unlock him from the flesh. That's why he sinned. And Israel went to war and they lost their peace because of his eyes, not the eyes of the Lord. And David knew. That's why David said, sit here, Lord. In his own throne. Sit here. Because that was the throne of Jerusalem. Of Israel. He knew Jesus as the king. Because David was a prophet. We know that from Acts 2. David, a prophet of God. So in these processes, I'm, I'm going to stop there because there's other, a couple other things I need to get to. It's 12 o'clock, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. That because I do want to have time to, to eat and fellowship. We got into, the church has gotten itself into a position that they have to humble themselves. And because of the self-deception of being blind, being religious and legalistic, just many, putting God in a box. The book is a, is a box. I'm sorry, it is. I've heard repeatedly, over 25 years now that I've been saved, I've heard repeatedly from the minute I got saved, if it's not in the Word of God, I won't receive it. Yeah. That is legalism, and that is a Jezebel spirit. Yeah. Yeah. But it is also Beelzebub. Because Beelzebub has got the church to believe, in too many churches, of the dispensation of time. Well, what they call the dispensation of time does away with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, especially the gift of tongues, which they say is demonic. Well, it isn't. Though they can mimic, it is not. They are heavenly languages given to us in heaven. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. If you go look at John 3, 13, in fact, I'm, I'm going to read it real quick. Because it's the key to what God is actually doing with us. We're going into John 3. Did everybody notice I'm using my new Bible? Yes, yes. I'm learning. It's a piece of work. Okay. John 3 is so critical. Oh, my gosh, it's so critical. People just don't get what John... John 3 is about the Godhead being given to us and what, what God wants from us. Salvation is a gift, but this is responsibility. All of John 3 is responsibility of salvation. Walking it out. Okay? And it literally is, it, it lays it out. Okay? Maybe God will let me do a teaching on it someday. Uh, yeah, we're going to 13. In fact, I'm going to 12 first. No, I'm going to 10. Jesus answered him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knoweth not these things? See, they're supposed to know. Okay? But they never search the scriptures for themselves. They never asked God to teach them. They went to school and learned. Okay? I'm, don't, don't take that wrong. Don't take that wrong, no. I'm simply saying beware. Okay? Be careful. Okay? I know a lot of scholars. I've met scholars throughout my 25 years, and some of the things they preach is not scriptural. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay? 
So, it, 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 but we just need to keep praying, okay? That God will convert them to spirit and truth. But that's why Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and truth. They come right out of the spirit, through the spirit realm, from his throne. Because God cannot lie. Amen. Period. Amen. That means the Holy Spirit cannot lie. And if there's a debate between scriptures, the Holy Spirit will have his way. Okay? If the debate does not stop, you need to back up and walk away from it. Because the devil is causing confusion. Okay? Mm -hmm. And most people don't know to do the warfare to, to, to recognize what's going on. That's why the Lord said it very clearly. Do not engage in endless debates and genealogies. Mm -hmm. Get away from them. Because they gender strife. In other words, they're meant to divide the body of Christ and cause trouble. And believe me, it works. Okay? But it also works when you avoid it. Okay? It's better to avoid than to get engaged in it. Okay? I've learned that from experience. So, 11, which is manifestation, by the way. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and yet you receive not our witness. And believe me, when you're speaking spirit of truth, you'll be shocked how many people don't receive everything you're saying. Okay? I'll give you an example when I'm done here. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Did you catch that? That's the spirit and truth. We must get heavenly things from the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ, the living word. <clears throat> Thirteen. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Did you catch all that? Who are you? Your heavenly houses of sacrifice. Oh, you think God just made you up? No. God breathed into you and made you a living spirit. God's breath is in you eternally. That's what makes you a heavenly house of sacrifice. No, we don't have to go kill ourselves and do it. No, we just simply have to die to ourselves. What does that make you? A house that is ascending. That's why we're built on the rock. Not beside it front or back, were built on the rock because he's already ascended. Okay? We came down out of heaven. How did you get your heavenly language? It was restored by the Holy Spirit. We were predestined. Okay? I will teach what God gives me. And there's much more to what I'm talking about in verse 13. There is so much more. But I'm not going to get into it now because it, it, it's a meeting by itself. And it takes up almost the whole Bible to do it. But the one thing that we need to recognize is Jesus is a righteous judge. Okay? And I like using this example because of one reason. Because it really hits home in how we've been raised scratching with scratching ears. Okay? Because people who have been traumatized and gone through everything, myself included, which God is, is, is and has and is and will continue to deliver me of until he's done with me. But we've been, because of the pain and suffering, the torment that we've endured in our lives, okay, there's always something, okay? It's more comfortable to have our ears scratched and we will seek teachers who will tell us what we want to hear, okay? So we don't feel worse than we do already. Or feel we have to do something we don't really want to do. Well, Jesus came to bind up the broken hearted. And if people do not understand, that can be very, very painful. Because you've got to give up your pain. Mm -hmm. And something with broken heartedness, which is the emotional trauma demonically caused. Mm -hmm. And it can even be a child coming around the corner and you scare him. Boo! Ah! Traumatized. Mm -hmm. It's demonic. That's true. It doesn't mean you're demonic. No, the devil used it to put trauma in that person. So as that person grows up, in many cases, they end up being scared of the dark. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
uh, trauma comes in so many forms. They, they've used the father to tear the, they, they, they tore apart the, 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 the families to destroy the image of our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. And he can't be trusted. And he's going to leave us. Going to forsake us. Okay? Going to abuse us. No! It's a lie! That's the devil ripping and tearing the body of Christ apart. And if you've ever judged anybody, even with your eyes, whether you speak it out or not, you need to repent. That's witchcraft. It's called an evil eye. Very real in the spirit realm. We've got to recognize many things that's going on. God has got to turn the body of Christ upside down and shake it and get all this garbage out of them. No you speak Jesus. against your brother or sister, you will be accused of murder. Yeah. Whether it's to their face or behind their back, whether they're around or not, that's murder. That's character assassination or murder. Yeah. And the Bible says, if you hate your brother, which means your sister or brother, you are a murderer. Mm -hmm. And in Revelation 19, 20 or 21, it says that liars and murderers and blah, 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 have no place, will take their place in the lake of fire, the second death. Did you catch that? Yeah. You see how serious things really are? Yeah. But we've had our ears scratched for so long that we don't believe our God does such things. You better go read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation again. Because yeah. in both, it says your names can be removed from the Lamb's book of life. And the Old Testament says the book. Well, there's only one, the book. That's why it's the last one to be opened when things are finished. The books of judgments are first. Then the Lamb's book of life to see if your name's in there. And by the way, when your name is in there and God knows it's eternal, God knows everything we're going to do. He knows whether you're going to walk away or not. Which is, is Hebrews 6, 1 through 6. Go read it. It's, it's scary. It's scary. And it happens. That's why it's in there. The, he, a lot of the Hebrew, the book of Hebrews has to do with the mind. Thinking, opinion. But at the same time it comes around and comes in behind it and shows the truth. Especially of who Jesus is and what he went through and why he did it. Okay? Jesus is, is our priest after the order of Melchizedek. He is Melchizedek, so to say. He's the Prince of Peace. Not, he is not a priest after the order of Aaron, which is the law. We're under grace. Jesus Christ. Okay? He's our priest. He's our high priest. Okay? The Aaronic was had to do with sacrifices of animals, where Jesus is the sacrifice of self to glorify the Son. That's why he was the first sacrifice. That's why he was also called the Lamb of God, because he's innocent. And it fulfilled the law on the cross of the curse of death. It didn't break curses. It will, as you walk it out, but what God did on the cross, the way he showed it to me, my blood and my stripes stopped the curse of death and those who received me with a pure heart. That's why whosoever confesses from their heart that Jesus is Lord shall be saved. We have so many things to recognize and look at in the word of God that people don't pay no attention to. And they're not taught in the church because it will turn the church upside down. In fact, if you start preaching it from the pulpit, guess what's going to happen? The church is going to walk out. Every place that somebody's been converted to the spirit and holy fire, speaking spirit and truth, the church diminished to almost nothing. Every single time. I know many of them. Some have talked shut down completely. God not playing the game. When you look at the word of God, you must take it for what he's saying, what he's showing, what he's revealing in the spirit. That's why he is the, he's the, the revelation part of the, of, of the mind of Christ. He grants us understanding. The wisdom is the knowledge of the Father, which he gave to the Son in revelation and understanding. So he knew what the Father's doing. He knows the Father's will. Well, Jesus has a will too. 
But Jesus gives it to the honor to the Father because the Father has honored him. That's why Jesus said, What's you ever ask the Father in my name? Now, there's going to be time you're just going to say Jesus or talk to Jesus. That's okay. He knows that. But keep the Father involved in what's going on because it's His will to be done. And He will make sure that He glorifies His Son whom He gave us as a gift. And as the Father said to me one time, what do you think they're going to do with my Son when they really come to know Him? Look what they've done with Him and they don't know Him. They don't really know the church. The church really does not know Jesus in spirit and truth. They do not. He's a figurehead in most churches. In most people's lives. They do their rituals, you know. I mean, come on, you rub beads? That's witchcraft. Ring around the rosy, witchcraft. Ashes, ashes, they all fell down. They're dead. This is a curse on our children. Wow. Rubbing beads summons demons. Depending on the type of beads they are. They've taken the beads and used the colors of God to make it look like it's okay. It's tradition of, fa of their fathers. And that's why Jesus said, don't obey the traditions of your fathers. Now you know why. That's a curse on the children. I've never seen any adults ever do it. I did it when I was a child. But God showed, when God showed me, I broke it. I broke it off my family and anybody else at the time. I just said, Lord, well, God brought me to a place. Now, when I pray, there's no boundaries on the prayer. I said, Lord, there's no boundaries on this prayer. Use it wherever you want, however you want, on whoever you want, or whatever you want. God doesn't just use people. He uses situations. He uses things. He uses whatever is necessary to accomplish what he wants to get accomplished, not just in us, but for us because of his son. Because if you're not in a place of honor, how can you honor the son? Again, self-image. Mm -hmm. And if you have a self-image, you can't forgive yourself. How are you ever going to receive the love of God? Right. That's why the mirror. Do it every day. It will start breaking things in your life. Okay. Every day do it. It will break things in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to add one more thing that you have to say. And yes, you guys got to do it too. I'm beautiful in the eyes of God. I know men like handsome. If you want to say handsome, but beautiful is more powerful. And guys, believe me, it will make and shake the pride in you as a man. And it needs to be shook and broke. 